switch to satellite. You know, I don't like being stationary like this. There's alligators, big alligators, all over this West Bank. Now, oddly enough, I haven't seen any today. But uh, it's only when I'm stationary like this that I worry about one jumping up and grabbing me. was a mean looking spider. That thing had a span of about a silver dollar. That's all. <laughs> I don't know what type it was, but he damn sure looked like he bites. There are just so many mosquitoes around me. I don't know if you can see them. There's just a swarm of them around me. The only thing that's not covered on my whole body is the tip of my fingers on. So I have my paddling gloves on. But, I mean, there's just mosquitoes in here like you wouldn't believe. I had to put on my bug shirt. This is the coolest bug ever brilliant neon green praying mantis just hanging out on my camera. I'm in the middle of the St. John's River in the uh, upper St. John's River marsh. Somehow this thing got in my canoe. I don't, I don't know where. I, there he is. Beautiful. Look how they look at you. Look at, see how he turned his head? about a 10 to 11 foot alligator. He's got a big head on him. Look at that sucker. Well, there were a bunch of river otters up here, but there's three of them that went in. I think there's still another one right down there swimming. But these were, yeah, there's one right there, right on the shore. big river otter. That is so cool. There was like three of them and they were all sitting up on their haunches like bears or something looking at me. Yep, there's the other one coming out. There they go. They're playing. They're running.
those are two 11 foot alligators, uh, about 14, 15 feet from me. He's about 20 feet from me. This guy just went under. They are all around me. Spoken, he's going to splash real loud. Kiss him. Haven't seen any boat traffic. Seen one boat go by all day. Not sure what time it is, but uh, one boat. The cypress tree starts splits into two, then it comes up, it splits into three, then it grows together again, <laughs> then it goes up and splits again and continues up to the heavens. That's an interesting looking cypress tree. All cypress trees are interesting, but that one is particularly interesting. Beautiful place if it wasn't for all the mosquitoes and water moccasins. Uh, you could you could primitive camp in here, stealth camp all friggin' day long. There's thousands of places. No one would ever know you're here. I just came in off the uh, canal that leads off the Sweetwater Canal going to the northeast. I've never been up here. But this is what's up here. There's miles and miles of marsh. It looks like Africa. Alright, sure I was cutting in here. I need to go over. But I'm only in uh, about 18, 20 inches of water right here. You can see how far offshore I am. 20 inches of water at max. And I'm pretty far out, you know, I'm uh, 200 yards offshore. So, anyway, let me turn it around. This is where I'm heading. something in the water up here that's pretty big, but I can't tell what it is. You may have heard people talk about the Indian mounds of Florida and wonder what they are. They're basically huge piles of shells that for thousands of years when the Indians would consume oysters and clams and snails and all these things, they would throw their shells in one big pile and they would make this mountain sometimes several hundred feet high. And here's one, a lot don't exist anymore, but here's one on the uh, in upper St. John's River marsh on the east bank of the, the west bank of the St. John's rather, that is relatively undisturbed. And you can just see the thousands of shells that have layered in there making this fairly high uh, island out of the savanna right on the edge of the river. And these things were already ancient. Here's the water line right here. And you can see they, they made quite an island out of it. And uh, these things were already ancient when the first Europeans got here. And the Spanish didn't know quite what to make of them. They thought maybe they had they interred their dead in them or something like that. And for the most part, they didn't. They were just big piles of refuse. And uh, the Indians were smart enough to know not to, you know, live around decaying matter and stuff. So when they had their bones of animals and shells of 
shellfish and stuff, which largely they subsisted on, they would have someone take them off here to the dump. <laughs> and here they are still to this day. Now a lot of these have been destroyed. Actually, they, they mined them for the phosphate and uh, a lot of the road crews in the early part of the 20th century bulldozed them and A1A and a lot of, you know, Interstate 95 and stuff, the, the, the base foundation is laid out with all these crushed coral shells and things like that that they found naturally all over Florida. But this one's fairly undisturbed. It's just south of State Road 520 uh, on the St. Johns River in the upper St. Johns River marsh. In fact, up there you can just make out uh, uh, some of the structure of uh, Lone Cabbage airboat rides. So and you can see cars going by barely in the distance. So, you know, this isn't out in the middle of nowhere or anything, but it's uh, it's an interesting phenomenon that you, you don't really see uh, too many other places, but along the St. Johns River, especially in the upper marsh, they're everywhere. I'm running into so many cypress knees kind of worries me because that's one thing that could bust a hole in a fiberglass canoe. There's not much that could, but they're not indestructible. And some of these things have a point on them like a knife, and they are hard as diamonds. I'd almost rather bang into oyster beds and stuff than to hit sharp cypress knees. They are just all around me. So I couldn't find, one thing I learned is if you're paddling through the marsh down a little creek and the, you start pushing through grass and the grass closes up behind you, stop and consider very seriously turning around right there because I couldn't find my way back out. I knew where I was at at all times, I'm just like I can't get to the lake, I can't crush through all this grass, like you can't paddle through that, you can't get out and drag the canoe through that, it's too deep. So the only thing I could do was Find, come, come back out the way that I'd come in. And I finally found it. I used actually Google Maps and this time it pinpointed right where I was at. So uh, that was arduous. some thunderstorms building up and it's not forecast to have thunderstorms today. It's the only day all week that wasn't meant to have any. I actually see white caps on Lake Washington. It was funny as I was coming through the canal, it was still pretty calm and I could see the water just waves just coming in here. I'm like, oh no. So this is very, makes me superstitious about Lake Washington. I tell you what, it's like the Bermuda Triangle of thunderstorms out here. So I'm going to paddle back down here for shelter. I got my tarp out. I put my handgun in the black case, put, took my phone down, I put the tripod as far away from me as I can. We're just going to see what happens. This is, this scares me. I am getting hammered and it's going to get worse. Look at all that stuff moving. 
Look at all that grass blowing in the wind. All right, this is the most dangerous situation you get in canoeing. I'm under my tarp, but uh, sitting, I can't, I got some bank right here, but I can't get to it. So I'm just going to weather it out in the canoe. Just as quickly and as intensely as it started, it ended. I mean, within like 60 seconds, it just stopped raining and or nearly stopped. So, uh, I'm going to get out of this godforsaken water lettuce patch I'm in and make it back to the boat ramp, I think. Big gator just came in here. Well, anyway, I'm way up this trail. Look at these woods. August 27, 2018. Boy, I wanted to get that alligator on film. He just swam right into here. He's a big one for this little creek. And that hole right behind me is deep and big. It's got to be like his secret little nest. All right, I don't like being stopped like this. And I went up to uh, the very north end, and I went into the woods, and there's an old homestead up there. And it's, I couldn't tell if anyone was in there. I was looking inside, but it's a plywood shack. I mean, the guy has kitchen sinks piled up outside and old chairs and stuff. Perhaps it's just some hunting camp that people use a few months out of the year, but I just had the feeling someone was in there watching me. And the creek wraps around it, does like a fish hook around it, and then dead end. So I went all the way to the end. Then on the way out, just like a, like 100 feet down from it, there's this clearing that I wanted to check for hog tracks. So I start to beach the canoe, and I notice there's a tombstone there, a flat grave marker, you know, a nice one like granite. And I get up and I videotaped it. I noticed the guy died in 1994, so it's not like some real old tombstone but it's just strange to find that house and I could see the house from the tombstone to the trees so it's that close there must be some association and that's some old hermit living up there I mean that's how wild this place is and those woods are like the woolly swamp I was expecting to see a cougar or some panther come out of the brush or so anyway I'm making my way out right now here's something you don't see every day this is a green chameleon not the Cuban anole, but the green anole that we used to have all over Florida. And that the brown Cuban anole moved in and pretty much ran off. But these are protected. These are, and he's a stowaway on my canoe. So I've had frogs get in here while I was paddling, a uh, green anole, and even a live fish that must have been in my shoe today. Hi there. Hi. That's pretty cool. 
seaplane going overhead. Looks like he's going to land. You know, it might be my friend. That's not raccoon track, that's coyote. That's big. Look at that, that's my hand next to it. That's about a three and a half inch long track. There's another one. That's coyote. So you can see the claws, claw marks in it. Oh, my legs hurt. That's where I sunk into that mud looked like all the rest which has been real solid all of a sudden down I went oh it's pretty damn hot out here it's getting that time of the days I think it's about 10 30 in the morning the sun's really starting to bake I'm gonna quit talking get back in the canoe and just sit or maybe not maybe I'll sit on the shore have a little picnic I'm just gonna sit the winds coming from my back straight out over the lake so anything down here isn't gonna smell me see him before he knows I'm here. That's the plan. <laughs> Alright, I'm doing what I love.